All right. So uh, I don't have any housekeeping to talk about, so I'm just going to jump right into the assignment. Um, this is going to be the second half of the assignment we started, the second half of the deep dive. So I'm going to share my screen. All right, so here's our home page. And let's go down to IED. And unit one. And we were working on the deep dive, which is activity 1.5. I don't know if any of you have completed the first part yet. Um, Yesterday, <laughs> it was apparent that nobody had even started it, but that's okay. I mean, we can still uh, talk about it. So if we go to the Resources tab, I want to I wanna remind you guys, this presentation right here outlines the design process that we use in this class, and it talks about what is a design process and what is it for. And I actually have already created a quiz for... Um, that presentation so you need to make sure that you look at it it's it's you know you don't need me to explain anything on there but you do need to go through it um, so uh, what you were supposed to do um, last time was do the first part watch this video and fill in the blanks on the first part of the document if you submitted it that's fine um, if you didn't submit it that's fine too if you did submit it, we're going to go ahead and uh, finish it up, and you can resubmit it with the second part attached. So just open up your old document, and um, we're going to do this together. So this presentation right here is about what is a design brief and how to write one. I'm going to go through it with you. I'm not, I'm not the presentation. You can review the presentation if you need to. It's an example of a child's toy. It's, a, it's an example of uh, writing a design brief for that child's toy. But what I'm going to do is go ahead and go to the document Let's wait for my warning. There we go. Um, so this is the assignment we talked about last time and what I asked you what I asked you to do was um, read through this, watch the video and complete this fill in the blank part. And there's a couple couple questions to answer. Please use a different color than black. I'm going to start taking points off for not doing that. So the second part of this assignment starts here and it talks about a design brief, which is a tool that you can use to identify the problem, solution expectations, and constraints. And engineers will refer to this um, throughout a project. So what we're going to do today is pretend that we were part of the IDEO design team for the shopping cart, and um, we're going to create a design brief for that shopping cart redesign. And I'm going to go through this with you together, uh, unless you have two computers in front of you or a split screen, which is fine if you want to do that. Uh, the other option is just take some notes. If you want to go grab a piece of paper and a pencil, uh, you can do that. But I'm going to fill out some of this together with you so that everybody does it correctly. And I'm going to explain it as we go. So I'll give you a couple minutes if you need to go get something to write with. Um, and then we'll get started. I'm going to pick a color here. Let's see. This color. All right, so we are creating a design brief for the shopping cart project, which if you haven't watched the video, what the team does is uh, designs a new shopping cart. Um, so the first thing that we want to fill out is who is the client? 
I'm sorry. Um, who is the client? So the client is the person who would hire you or a company or a partnership or somebody to create something for them. So the client for this project would be what? Who? Who would pay for this design? Yeah, who, who would the client be for this shopping cart? Well, maybe you didn't watch the video, that's fine. The client in this case would be grocery stores. Those are the people who would um, consider buying a newly designed shopping cart. All right. Now, the other, um, you guys need to turn off your microphones. <laughs> Thank you. Um, the other thing we need to talk about is the client is the person who buys it or hires your company. Um, the end user may not be the same as the client. So, for example, the, 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 the toy, the child's toy, the client, the people who are going to buy that are, um, um, I'm going to type this in here too. <clears throat> These are the, just so you understand the difference. Um, so the end user sometimes is the same as the target consumer. Sometimes they're different. All right, so the end user or target consumer is who's going to use this product. So in the case of the child's toy, the target consumer is not the same as the end user. The target consumer would be the parents or the grandparents or the aunts or uncles or brothers and sisters or whoever is going to purchase the toy. The end user would be the child. So um, in this case, however, the end user is also the target consumer, which would be the shoppers at the various grocery stores. Okay, shoppers at the various grocery stores. Now, the designer is the engineering company, or you, when you work on your projects, that will be you. But in this case, the designers were an engineering company called IDEO, I want to do this first. And that is an acronym for something. I, I don't honestly remember what it stands for, but you can look it up. Uh, but it's a engineering company in Palo Alto, California. So those are the designers. This is the client. The client would hire this designer. And then they're designing this shopping cart to be used by shoppers. Now, the other two, well, the three main sections left to cover are the problem statement, the design statement, and the criteria and constraints. The problem statement and design statement are very closely related. What you have to remember about the problem statement is that the, what it does is it just states, quote unquote, the problem. So when you watch that video, you will observe several problems that the designers are looking at trying to address. So one of the issues is shopping carts damage vehicles in the parking lot. That's one of the um, issues that they look at in the video. One of the other problems, and notice, I'm just stating the problem. I'm not saying what I want you to do about it. I'm not saying how to fix it. I'm just saying this is what, what is going on and I don't like it. One of the other issues they came up against were, oh, let me go ahead and change this first, that the shopping carts 
were stolen. Okay, that was another issue. A third issue was that the shopping carts, oops, forgot to change the color, were unsafe for children. Now those were three problems that the new design was supposed to fix or address. There are more, so I'm not going to write them all down. You need to write at least one more on your own, and you will see that in the video. So that's your problem statement. I know this says uh, write your answer in a complete sentence, but if you just want to write separate sentences, that's fine. Now the design statement just follows up the problem statement. The design statement, every single design statement, will always start with design, build, and test. Every design statement will start with those three words design, build, and test. Then you can follow it up by addressing the issues that you stated in the uh, problem statement. So I want to design and build and test a new shopping cart that will not damage vehicles in the parking lot be safe oops for children I do not type I know this is torture it is for me too be safe for children um, and will not be stolen Now you will also add that fourth item that you're going to put in here on your own. So design, build, and test a new shopping cart that, did I leave off my teeth? No, I didn't. That will not damage vehicles in the parking lot, be safe for children, and will not be stolen. It doesn't say how. It doesn't say what materials to use. It doesn't say anything other than it, it, it's written to challenge the engineer to do this task. But how it's done is completely up to the engineer. The last part is also very important because these are the restrictions that the company has to deal with. And they're also uh, criteria that the, the uh, product must meet. So one of the restrictions that was on that company, and I'll write this down, was and, and some constraints are very similar for all projects. And one of those is time. But for this example, they had to complete the project in one week. Okay, that was a constraint. That was a constraint. Um, there are some others but I'm going to let you fill those in after watching the video. Okay, so uh, criteria kind of similar to what the des design st statement said. You could also put in things like, yeah, it, it shouldn't damage cars, it shouldn't be stolen, it, you know, that kind of thing. But the constraints are what <clears throat> limit the engineer. So a very common constraint is time, um, and there are others. So that's what you'll do, and after you complete that and complete this, you'll submit that. So I gave you uh, three class periods to get this done. If you did submit the first part, just resubmit with the second part completed. Um, and I believe that's it. Um,